the neighborhood has changed over the years as I walk down yesterday's memories my home I can hear it calling Hi, you're watching Davis Square TV. My name is Mimi Graney, and we're here in the Holland Street Playground. And this episode of Davis Square TV, we're mostly going to be looking at many of the young athletes here in the city. As you probably know from the last episode of Davis Square TV, we interviewed Jim Callahan from the Small Rec Commission. And he talked to us about the inter-playground track meet. In this episode, we're going to be showing you some of the highlights of that meet. It was a really wonderful time. But first, we're going to open up with another uh, event run by the Summer Rec Commission. It was the August 2nd Playground Extravaganza, and it was a really great time. One of the uh, staff people at the Rec Commission, Jack Hayes, videotaped it as part of Davis Square TV. And he was able to videotape it thanks to a kind donation from the uh, Circuit City store. They donated a camcorder to the Rec Commission to use throughout the summer and for the future so that they can put stuff on SCAT. So thanks very much to Circuit City. So here's some of the playground extravaganza and um, we'll be back. We're here at Trump Field for the Recreation Commission's annual play day extravaganza. With us here are all of the leaders from the 13 units staffed this summer by the Recreation Commission along with their children. What the day's activities will consist of is various relay games, and stunts along a, a line formation to um, just test the kids' agility and ability to have fun. Um, there, there are no trophies awarded here today and there are no prizes to speak of of any nature. Every kid who does uh, come up here will get some sort of a participatory award. And it's a good way for the leaders to see the other leaders who are on playground sites as well as the children many of whom go to school with each other, but in the summer go to different playgrounds. So as we look at the games just starting now, uh, this will be one of a dozen games that the kids will get a little bit of a point total on as to which playground line was the straightest and which playground line was the most enthusiastic, which performed the activities drill as it was uh, laid out to them. And this will go probably for about an hour and a half uh, before the children have their lunch break and then go back to their playground units. As you can see, some of the people having the most fun are the leaders themselves. This year, we haven't had the ability to do a great deal of travel on the playgrounds because we only have one leader at each site. And when we do a special event like this, it requires us to close the site. So with that in mind, the leaders look forward to times when they can take the kids off the unit and meet other kids. <laughs> Director for today's program is Rec Supervisor Elaine Peroni who dreams up these playground skits each year, and it's always amazing how imaginative and different they are.
was Jack Hayes who videotaped the uh, playground extravaganza on August 2nd and he was using a camcorder donated by Circuit City. And right after these messages we're going to meet Joanne Riviccio who's active in Somerville football both with Pop Warner and with the Somerville High School. Hi I'm Laurie Tressler and I want my Davis Square TV. My name is Jack Hayes, and we love our Davis Square TV. Hi, I'm here with Joanne Riviccio, who is the president and director of Somerville Hub Warner. No, actually, I'm not the president. Oh. I'm just the chair and director. Chair. Hi, everyone. So tell us about Somerville Hub Warner. Well, I've been involved for about six years. First, my husband started to coach, and then, of course, they recruited me. I became secretary. And then after that, I became chair and director. I don't have any girls. I have two boys, but I love little girls, so I really like to get involved with this program. How many kids take part? Well, 
I think last year we had 264 kids in the program. Girls, we only have 24 to a team, and uh, the boys, there's 35 on a team. So the girls do cheerleading and the boys do football? Mm -hmm. Some girls play football, though. Unfortunately, none of them have um, practiced, you know, gone through all the practices to stop playing, but we had several. So when did the season start? Uh, we started August 1st. And how, how are they doing? Well, they're doing pretty good for now, but we really won't be able to tell until three or four weeks of practice. Uh, the first week they actually just get conditioned, so they're constantly doing their running and doing their exercises. Then eventually they get their helmets, like today's the first day that they can use them. And then a couple of days later we'll actually put them into their equipment. And they'll also do some more conditioning exercises, and then eventually they'll start hitting and, and doing the plays together. And when's the first game? It'll be September 11th at Dillboy. It'll, it'll start at 9 o'clock in the morning with our D team, which is our 8, 9, and 10 year olds. So it's Sunday, September 11th at Dillboy? Yes, opening season. And, um. <laughs> and the girls that do the cheerleading, um, how are they doing so far? Well, a lot of these girls have many, many years of practice, and they're doing excellent. And the newcomers, uh, they're doing fairly well. As long as it, what I try to do is to stress to them that they're up against girls that are their age, but they've also been sharing for a few years, and that not to get discouraged, there's plenty of people that will teach them, and um, they will do just as well as the other girls within a month. So, and, and the girls not only cheer at the games, but they also compete Yeah, we do locally. have competitions. Uh, we have a GBL competition coming up October 22nd. I really don't know what time or where the location will be. And then they go on to something called the New Englands. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the Eastern Conference. And then after that, they go on to the Eastern Conference and then to the Nationals, if they're lucky. But they have a lot of competition in about 40 to 50 s other cities that participate. So, and you're also involved in the Somerville High School football. Yes. What I would do is work with one child in one program, and now that the child was the oldest son was old enough to go on to high school, of course, I have to support him. So I'm just as involved in that program as I am with Pop Warner. And my youngest will be going to the high school next year. So I'll probably move on and work up there. So the Somerville High School football is planning a big car wash. Yes. Um, August 21st on a Sunday from 9 to 4. We'd like to have everybody come up and support the boys. We're trying to raise some money to uh, purchase them away shirts. Okay, and also to help supply a banquet at the end of the year for them. So what, what day is the car wash? It's Sunday, August 21st. It starts at 9 and it'll be over around 4 o'clock. And it's up at the City Hall? Yes, at the Summerville High Concourse. And you're also um, now organizing a big homecoming weekend this year. Well, yes, well first of all I have to go and um, get permission from the city. I really, ha I'm in the process of doing that right now. What I'd like to see is to have more people support their boys in the age groups of 14 to 17. They really need to know that we support them and we're there for them. So what we would like to do is have a semi-parade right here at Dillboy and bring it onto the field and have uh, the band involved, maybe the color guard, also a few little teams from Pop Warner come on the field and celebrate them coming home too. And it, it should be a nice time. I have a lot of people very enthusiastic in trying to organize this function. And hopefully they'll keep doing this in years to come. So what are some of the plans around the homecoming event? Well, actually, what we'll, have, we'll bring back is the tradition of having a homecoming dance and having the king and queen. And um, basically, that's it, plus having the parade to welcome the boys back on the field. And that's about it. You know, we really haven't thought it out because it's October 29th and we still have time to plan. If anybody's interested in helping, please do so. So what other fundraising events are the high school and Pop Warner involved in? Well, actually, we ha the only fundraiser we have right now for the high school is the car wash. But what we'd like to do is promote that every home game people bring their cans down to Dillboy Stadium so that we can cash them in and put that can money towards, you know, the away shirts. 
and um, with Papuana we do have we're not able to have um, people support us we're not supposed to have official sponsors so if anybody would like to make a donation to help us you know this helps pay for the field and referees and and also equipment we replace it every year we want to make sure that the kids are safe you know any donation will help us in these areas um, well, I know that Somerville is pretty unusual in that they try to make it affordable that the kids don't have to spend a couple hundred dollars on equipment every year. That's right. We don't charge the children to purchase equipment. Um, the, we do charge a $60 registration fee for the first child. Second child and third child are, are cheaper. Um, and like I said, we're one of the only cities that don't really actually charge people for equipment. So you're going to be involved in a, a fundraising drive about canning? Mm -hmm. What canning is is that we have all the, uh, the girls with parents supervising uh, go on different corners like McGrath and, and, and Broadway and actually ask people with a can to donate to their cause. Uh, and all the girls will be in their uniforms. This is their sweater. And the boys, of course, will be wearing their game shirts, which I don't have at this time to show you. So um, they're going to be all over the city on September 17th? Right, and also on October 15th. So they'll be at stoplights in various Absolutely. squares? They really enjoy it. A lot of the children like it. It is one of the best fundraisers that we have. How much money do you need to raise? Well, we don't really set our goals on a percent, uh, specific percentage. Um, we usually just buy the equipment and we, us we have about a year to pay for it. So we might do it with, with having adult dances or, like I said, the canning drives, um, candy. Uh, we'd like to do a car wash next year for the Papa Wanna program. It's, we don't want to flood the response, you know, give too many responsibilities to the kids and the parents. Well, everyone should come down to Dillboy September 11th? Yes, that'll be our opening game. So it starts at 9 a.m.? 9 o'clock in the morning. We start with the, a, I'm sorry, with the D team. And then we go on around 2 o'clock with the A team. We're through about 3, 30, 4 o'clock. Please come down. You'll enjoy yourself. All right. Hold out. So come, join and, uh, come down and cheer for the Packers here at Dillboy Field. And uh, thanks for joining us, Joanne. Right. Come on down to our concession stand. We have the greatest hot dogs in town. We also serve wonderful coffee. You can get hats. Yeah, hopefully we'll have hats and sweatshirts at that time to be sold. Thank you. Is that all right? Never did interviews before. Stay tuned to Channel 3 for more Pop Warner uh, football coverage. And we're going to show you some of the opening highlights from the Interplayground track meet. It was a fabulous, fabulous event. It was the 73rd one. Stay tuned to SCAT in the next couple weeks. The producer of Davis Square TV, Joe Fortunato, is going to bring you a complete coverage of the entire Interplayground track meet. Thanks to the Recreation Commission for such a wonderful job coordinating that event. It was a, a massive undertaking of coordination of both the judges and the coaches and the, all the kids and the crowd. It was a great time. Throughout this episode of Davis Square TV, we've been looking at youth athletics and we want to really encourage everyone in the city to support our young athletes. As you can see in the show that they've been working really hard and there's a lot of great talent out there. And for such a hot, long summer, it's been great to have such a trouble-free one. So just want to remind you about the car wash for the Somerville High School football team. They're trying to raise money for away shirts so that they'll be properly dressed when they go out on the field. In other towns, we have to show them on how well dressed the Somerville football team can look. And that car wash is going to be on Sunday, August 21st from 9 to 4 on the concourse there between City Hall and the high school. So go out and support them. And thank you for watching this latest episode of Davis Square TV, and we'll see you next time. This is John Hayes and I want my Davis Square TV on Sunville Cable.